egalitarian equines. I am Silver Quill, your host for this MBS show. Joining me today are podcaster and planeswalker extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. Everything is going to Kikaku. Yes, Kikaku. That's totally a thing. And, and here to translate enemy speak is Sapphire Heart Song. Well, I didn't say I would do this. I didn't sign up for this when I signed up for the MBS show. What the hell, Full Silver? What the hell, Norman? Yeah! I swear, everything is no longer equal here. Do you know what Kikaku means? No! Okay, well, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for Sapphire's final MBS show. <laughs> as, <laughs> per- <laughs> as apparently she does not meet the qualifications to translate for Norman Sanso. <laughs> Uh, Ikaku, it means he's an idiot who wants equality? I don't know. No, Ikaku okay, well, is just plan I don't know. in Japanese. Oh. I know, the mystic is gone. <laughs> the mysticism is gone, and now so is Sapphire. Uh-huh. There you go. Uh, now we need to use that Yu-Gi-Oh card. Monster Reborn? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm a monster now? How new? Well, uh, let's see here. I could, oh wow, I could show off my Yu-Gi-Oh nerdisms. <laughs> Name all the cards we could use to return you to life. Uh, living, oh, the Japanese card is called Living Dead, but it's the trap card. Call of the Hunted, yeah. Sapphire, are you haunted? <laughs> or do you have call waiting? <laughs> well, either way, here we are in the, talking about murder and supernatural resurrection. When really we should be talking about another type of magic, the magic contained within a certain unicorn. One of the most magical unicorns of all who is on an adventure to learn about friendship. Yeah. Princess Twilight Sparkle? Starlight Glimmer. Aww. I mean, yay! <laughs> well, it kind of is Starlight Sparkle. I mean, Twilight Sparkle, Sunset Shimmer, Starlight Glimmer. Uh, watch, child. watch Twilight's next rival be Sparkle Shine <laughs> Spinner. Oh, wow. Well, what about Celestial Spark? How about Dawnset Winter? <laughs> yeah. Dawnset Winter. That actually sounds like a really cool name. I must, I must create a character out of that. <laughs> I got copyright. You owe me a quarter every time you use that name. <laughs> uh, oh, but anyway. Too bad. I, I had the winter part. You said winter. Oh, I didn't hear you say winter. I heard you say winter. I said winter. Copyrighted. Derivative work. Oh, well. Copyright. <laughs> uh, Ching. But that's, Stupid equality. <laughs> uh, but, this, but that's besides the point. So, um, today's episode, Starlight Glimmer, right? So, this is going to be Starlight a... Starlight Glimmer. <laughs> so, this is going to be a MBS show discussion then. All right. Oh, we are on the MBS show. I thought we were just talking copyright claims. We're just going <laughs> to talk about Jim Sterling. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, yay. But, yes, we realize that we talked about alicorns, but here's a unicorn who is on par with an alicorn. She has gone hoof to hoof, horn to horn. No, that is not meant to be a ship fix. Stop it. <laughs> I ship it. <laughs> but, basically, she is now, many are calling her the seventh member of the main six. So, let's talk a little bit about this. Mm-hmm. So, there's not our usual spoiler discussion, as many much of what we are going to talk about has already aired. Mm-hmm. And I've always been a little unsure on that. How long does an episode have to be out before you stop saying, oh, spoilers? Uh, a few days. Two weeks or At three. least until, like, Monday. Two or three weeks? Zuta yeah, no. It's true. I've heard people who are very upset at me for mentioning an, an episode three or four weeks after it had aired, saying they hadn't seen it yet. Like, guys. That's your own fault. I can't help it that you haven't seen the mo- the episode. It's been out for a good while. Yeah, the three week mark is already good because by that time, episode three and four are out already. Anywho, so our discussion today will not feature any spoilers, but we will speculate on her future. But let mm-hmm. us start at the beginning, which is her childhood. Philly Starlight, she's cute. She has that really cool design. She has pigtails. Mm-hmm. But she still really cool designs. And what can we say about this? Well, let's talk about the pigtails, because I've always been curious. Young boys, not encouraged to go the pigtail route. It's meant to be a uniquely female hairstyle. Well, boys don't normally have long hair. So, But here's my question. Why is it considered a, a look associated with young girls, but not adult women? 
pipes. There are women who wear pigtails. I believe in the upcoming Ghostbusters movie, the quirky one has pigtails. And going back to Naruto, Tsunade has pigtails. Well, uh, are those pigtails or double braids? Uh, those are double braids. Oh, okay, my Those bad. aren't pigtails. Pigtails are normally, like, above the head. Well, actually, pigtails are normally associated in a cute factor. There are pigtails in, like, anime characters sometimes, like, uh... Like, from the top of my head, uh, Yandere Simulator, the character Konata, or whatever her name is, uh... The girl with, like, the tornado swirls around her head. That's pigtails. It can be cute. It's just sort of funny to start her off. Well, all the main characters tend to have just the same main style. Starlight has perpetually changing hair, main. It's her main feature. Well, that's good because we like to see change in a character we like to see. And having her change main style from Philly to dictator to student, that's good. That is true when you think about it. The pigtails imply youthful, maybe a little t- time of innocence. As she got older, she went with the, not quite a bowl cut, bangs? Yeah, I mean, bangs. Part of the group, but clearly the first amongst equals, as symbolized by her ponytail. Not her pony's tail, ponytail. And then undoing that to say she's left that, that mentality behind. That's a character's change reflecting growth, and I think that's a very good, subtle touch. Well, the design is good, but when talking about Philly Starlight here, uh, we have to also include Philly Sunburst, because there are two peas in a pod. Oh, don't start singing. (laughs) I will. (laughs) My big brother, best friend forever. (laughs) Uh, Another resurrection spell. Yeah, we'll use premature burial. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we can use that too. But anyway, like I said, when we have Philly Starlight, we also have to talk about Philly Sunburst. And these two are the two best of friends. They do everything together. They interact with each other. They just are two peas in a pod. And Sunburst here is the guy who loves to read and learn, while Starlight here just likes to do practical. And... They help each other by, well, Sunburst will teach Starlight how to do things via book. Sunburst will read, understand, and try to do it. And she does it good. Better than he. What makes me wonder, later, Star uh, Sunburst's own frustrations that he can't do magic. I wonder if if Starlight was sort of an inspiration to him growing up with her talents. And that's part of why he's so ashamed he can't do that level of magic. When we see them as Phillies, we didn't get the full story of Sunburst. We just get to see the story where Sunburst saved Starlight from the falling books of doom. And we get to see him getting very excited and Starlight getting very sad that her best friend's leaving for Celestia's school for the gifted. And he bottom smacked her on the way out. Oh yeah, that's just me. Like, thanks for the cutie, Mark. I'll see you, sucker. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I, that really didn't speak well for Sunburst. I was kind of glad he was a nicer guy in adulthood. Yeah, but hey, when kids get excited, they get excited. Here's the thing I pondered. Starlight had tremendous magical talent. How did she never get in the school for gifted unicorns? She probably didn't have, like, the knowledge that Sunburst did. Like, remember last week when I was sort of rambling on about, like, um... The difference between, like, academic smarts and, like, street smarts. But you need both in order to survive. I was mostly fixated on your obsession with beards and playing with sunbursts. Oh my gosh, I love beards. I want to pet them. But besides (laughs) that, it's great to have academic smarts and it's great to have street smarts. But if you can apply both into the playing field, then it works for your advantage. For sunburst. He didn't exactly have the playing field, like he couldn't physically do it. And that kind of affected him in his performance. I do understand what you mean, because Sunburst here, from the very beginning, has shown that he does know what to do, but doesn't have enough power or... Or he can't perform it. He can't manifest what he can read. Well, he can a bit in terms of levitation. They show him levitating a book. Once Starlight here reads how to do it, she can levitate four blocks. 
Um, I'm not sure how easy or hard this is, but I've heard that levitating more than one thing is hard. I could be wrong. I think it depends. I mean, you could use two fingers to lift like a keychain and a pencil at once on, using, on one hand. But try that with larger objects and you're in for a bad time. Yeah, there's that analogy too. But this resulted in Starlight being kind of dumped and she resented that. Because of Cutie Mark, she lost her friend. But also, this is why I asked why she, she couldn't go to a school. You'd think if you have someone with raw magical talent, it's kind of dangerous to let them just wander about life unsupervised. And, oh, look, she started a cult using a spell I guess she either made or discovered. Oh, God, that's one thing I didn't talk about last week. When Sunburst recommends several spells to make old friends reconcile. Uh, oh, God. Uh, yeah. Oh, if you thought I was upset about the reform spell, when it was going to be used on actual antagonists, now you've got a spell to make ponies behave? <laughs> uh, oh, my God! Well, there's a spell for everything, like the iPhone app. There's an app for everything. So, so oh, some God. unicorn down the way, around the world, he said, you know what? I feel like viciously tearing off the cutie mark of another. Because I can, yo. Well, think about it this way, Silver. Think about it this way. If you're in a prison, let's just say a prison where you... Why put am in... I in prison? No, no, I mean... I, bet... I mean, in terms of uh, that spell. If a bad pony goes to prison and the warden wants to control said prisoner... Using that spell can do a lot to, well, control said prisoner. Well, in a way, forcing good on others is bad within itself. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying that it's good, but I'm saying that the spell was created for a reason. And my example for ripping one's cutie mark off is, well, one reason. I'm not saying it's good, but it's the reason there. It's I... the sunshine makers all over again. My God. <laughs> I, I, I could see that being applied in an equestrian prison. There's just two problems with that. One, I've never seen an equestrian prison. Uh, <laughs> two, we don't cut off people's limbs when we send them to prison. So, Unless you're in other countries. Ah, uh, well, that's that's a whole other topic. That's, yeah. I, there, there's, so, there's sort of a point, it's like, how far can you go before you become the villain? And I, I just can't imagine anyone having a morally justified reason to remove someone's cutie mark and write it down. Because that's the other thing. These spells, these reform spells, these make-a-friend spells, they're in public books. There's no forbidden knowledge in any of this. At least Star Swirl's uh, time scrolls were kept in a library under ineffective guard. Yeah, under his own wing. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's the other thing about Star Swirl I want to ask one day. How did he go from having a shelf named after him to being the most powerful wizard in Equestria? I don't know. I, I don't know. But but I digress. We're talking about the not quite uh magical sunburst and the very magical starlight. Mm -hmm. Basically, one way or another, either she made that spell or she found that spell. Letting her roam about unchecked caused a lot of danger. That's the thing. If you're a loner and you avoid and you have resentment for a cutie mark, that will happen. And talking about cutie marks... We go to adulthood starlight where she somehow managed to brainwash an entire village and take their cutie marks. There we go. We're again with the cutie marks. Well, and brainwashing is, is maliciously easy to do if the people are already hurting or vulnerable. And I get the sense that she, that starlight came into the lives of each member just as they'd hit rock bottom for some reason. I'm curious to know what Double Diamond. He apparently met her in the mountains and left his skis right there on the spot to join her. He must have been in a pretty bad state for that to happen. It's a really fascinating story. It's I'm curious to know how Starlight won over all these ponies, given that the main six themselves were all almost found it comedic, the idea of giving up their cutie marks. Well... Probably something happened to them to warrant them to give up their cutie marks. Yeah, and that's what makes me fascinated. That could be a whole... You could do a whole comic on that. Yeah. 
You could, couldn't you? Yeah, probably someone already did. Who knows? Well, I'd like <laughs> to see. I'd like to see IDW ah. tackle it. Tackle. Do you really want to? Yes. Yes, because as much as I enjoy fan comics, as much as I enjoy fan interpretation, more often than not, the critical flaw is that people are afraid to bring something new to the table. It's taking what's already there and trying to weave it all together, but forgetting to add a new flavor to the mix. Now, a big exception being Twilight's first day, where the artist uh, Muffinshire mm-hmm. introduces new secondary characters and does it very well. That's what makes the comic so much fun. Not everyone does that. So when IDW, if they were to tackle it, they might introduce some new characters or a fresh take on the fallback four, as I call them, and how, how Starlight influenced each one. That could be a good plan. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't want to see it, but I'm afraid of what they could do. They could mess it up. But hey, if IDW decides to, well, tell a backstory about Starlight Glimmer in future issues, that would be cool. There's always the fear that something's going to be messed up. It's in the back of every fan's head. Next year, when we're all in theaters to go see the My Little Pony movie, the actual movie, there will be that niggling little fear. What if this isn't good? It, Star Wars fans faced it multiple times. Star Trek fans will face it this summer. I'm sure other fandoms always have that fear. You can't let that stop you, though. True, true. Mm. Full speed ahead, tally ho. So, dictate the starlight here. She dictated her town, and what was her goal, by the way? She Well, you know, when it first came out, I wondered, okay, does she really believe this? Is she trying to undermine everyone else so she's the most powerful? But no, based on the season finale, she genuinely believed she was creating a real idealized society. Her hatred of cutie marks and what they cost her drove her to an extreme. But here's a question. Compare her to Moondancer. Mm -hmm. I find Moondancer much more believable in motivation, mostly because that pain is still only about a year old. It's still fresh. Starlight has had years and years to make new friends. And yet somehow... chose not to. Chose not to, and yet this hatred of cutie marks instead is like, really, lady? (laughs) Yeah. Really? I hope that if IDW does do the comic, I want to see more backstory of Starlight getting hurt by cutie marks. Because getting ditched by your best friend, getting a cutie mark is sad. But we need more. I mean, it's just illogical for one event to dictate your whole life. Probably some people live by that rule, but hey, um, I'm being practical here. Spike tried to use that mentality on her in the Crystal Empire. Hmm, that might not have been the best thing for him to do. <laughs> Wait, what mentality? If you don't do this friendship lesson, you might never be able to make friends again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god. Just... Yeah, but still, but still. I'm just looking at TV tropes because there is actually a uh, a trope for single, I think it's called single issue psychology. This one event defines your life when really people are far more complex and diverse than that. That already reminds me of uh, Meet the Robinsons uh, character goop in a way. I know that's a weird comparison to make, but if you take a look at that character and how, like, a single event sort of affected him, and there was this one moment that kind of hit that for me that sort of reminded me of Sir Light Glimmer in a way. There's this moment where he's telling his backstory, and everybody's all, oh, hey, Goop, hi, hi, want to come over to my place? Everybody hated me. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the vibe I get with, um... Starlight? Starlight Glimmer. Yeah, I mean, that was done for comedic purposes, but I can believe that this happened here too, where she's stuck on a one-track mind of cutie marks are evil, cutie marks are evil. Evil. Mm-hmm. But during this time, uh, we get to see her have a lot of power, power enough to rip off the cutie mark from Princess Twilight Sparkle who is an alicorn. And that raised an issue with fans 
For some reason, fans believe that alicorns have this autoimmunity on all the time, that mag- a magical blast won't affect them. Well, I think Starla has proven beyond a doubt if you catch an alicorn unawares, she's just as vulnerable as anyone else. Didn't Cadence and Shining Armor's wedding prove that when Chrysalis blasts Princess Celestia? Uh, people seem unwilling to let go of alicorn godhood. <laughs> uh... Well... I believe that alicorns can at least, like, take a hit or whatever from normal ponies. I can understand if they're not as, like, um, powerful as, like, other mythical creatures in Equestria. But considering that you're supposed to get a bit of a boost when it comes to alicorn hood, it's strange to consider that Twilight was boosted a level up when she became a princess, so everybody's going to automatically assume that she gained a bit more powerful magic, because alicorn magic is separate from unicorn magic. Is it? I'd like to think so. I'd like to think so, but lately I'm not so sure. But is it? Because if you take a look-see and understand what's going on in terms of each princess's role, you get to see Princess Celestia. Her powers are to race and set the sun. And when her sister was gone, she also had the power to manipulate the moon. So in Princess Luna's case, she can raise the moon and set the moon and stuff. And also she has the power to dreamwalk. So you have that. So in a nutshell, Princess Luna's ability is to control the night, where she can dreamwalk, where she can um, control the stars and whatnot. And Princess Celestia can control the sun. Other than that, she takes care of a whole nation. Is there anything special to her besides sun and taking care of the country? The ability to inspire fans to view her as a paragon saint or an awful troll. Ah, yes. You have the yeah. dynamic range. <laughs> All righty then. And Princess Cadence. Princess Cadence here has the power to... Little to none. Well, she... But she doesn't do anything with it. She has powers. Her... Cutie Mark is love, and she is the princess of love. So she, I won't say manipulate, but she, I won't say control. Wow, she's not good. I will. I will. <laughs> okay, go I ahead. I will say manipulate and control. I will say she zaps people to behave the way she wants. It's horrible. It's it's terrifying. <laughs> okay, you. Insist. Who knows? Maybe she did the same to Shining Armor. Nah. Oh, well, that would. That's be... not real love. <laughs> oh God, that be that would be awful. Actually, it's not really hard to believe, considering um. Who was doing all the work while she was getting a hoof cure? Was she? No, but she... I, she I'd like she, to think so. She's perusing books while her husband is chasing their daughter. Yeah, but um, Cadence, love. And Twilight here is magic. And what magic was that? That's, uh, to be more specific, is the magic of friendship. She's the princess of friendship. Each alicorn here has their special talent. I don't want to repeat myself, but each pony or each princess's special talents, and they excel at it. Um, Twilight here has been known for her mastery of magic, and she can do spells. But I'm betting that she's not the only one who knows how to do avocadabra. Which brings us back to Starlight, who whose power does seem on par with an alicorn. When she finally reemerged and took uh, took steps to break up Twilight's friendships. And through time, she was able to go battle it out with Twilight, perhaps even from a greater uh, vantage, because Starlight, one, knew what was going on, had, knew, had the magical knowledge, and she wasn't afraid to actually use lethal magic. I mean, they were slicing up clouds pretty awful. Mm, but Silver, I ask you this. Do you think that Twilight is that powerful in terms of Alicorn magic? Twilight was powerful as a unicorn, so I'm not sure if she's received a boost, but she's always had magical power. Yeah, so remember what I said before, where Twilight here is the princess of friendship, from my point of view, is only boosting her power in terms of friendships. Well, I'm I'm not sure, seeing as how we never see her actually do anything leadership in terms of friendship. I mean, it's always, we always see the aftermath. Yeah. And, and actually I'm, I'd be terrified because if that were the case, she'd be using those force of friendship spells 
from from the season six premiere, <laughs> which again really creeped me out. I don't care if it's for my own good. This is what George Orwell would say. Yeah, that's my pony. <laughs> oh, wow. But still, um, on to Sunset and Twilight duking it out. We do see that, um, Sunset, we, sorry, did I say Sunset? Like I yes. say, she feels, she feels like Sunset 2.0. Yeah. I, I, of course. I just like Sunset more. But anyway, um, we do see that Starlight here duking it out with Twilight. And while duking it out, Starlight here is using a spell to fly and shoot laser beams at the same time. So that is no easy feat. That's a testament to her magical ability. It makes sense that once Starlight has gotten uh, what TV Tropes calls the Freudian excuse, <laughs> uh, once she's got that out of the way and she goes through that rather hasty reformation, I mean very hasty reformation, uh, it makes sense that she becomes Twilight's pupil because that much talent should not be wandering across for you unsupervised. We need a little guidance. And, well, we do see that in the new season. We do see that after Starlight has accepted her fate and prepared to be punished, Twilight brings her into the club and she becomes her student. And Starlight is willing to learn the magic of friendship. And now we've got three potential successors to Kate, uh, Celestia and Luna, which is just getting, it's just getting overkill at this point. Yeah, pretty much. Wouldn't it be four if you count, like, Sunset, Twilight, and all them? Plus Flurry Heart. She's going to be a princess one day, we all know that. Oh, she's already a princess. Well, yeah, it's already been clear and stuff, but still. Yeah. Mm. She's, Never mind. She still needs to develop her potential and power. We still got no idea what she is. In terms of... She needs to get a personality first. Yeah, I mean, she's still young. So far, the only personality we've got is sneezing. But we're not here to talk about Flurry Heart, that one over there. <laughs> we're here to talk about Starlight. Princess Flurry Nostrils. <laughs> uh, boy. Now we finally come to the reconciliation. Starlight is in the Crystal Empire to see a friend. And she's nervous as can be. I mean, she was nervous just about starting friendship lessons. And Twilight chose something of a whopper. Also, we forgot to mention this last time. Twilight reveals to Starlight she knows where Sunburst is. I'd like to believe Celestia dropped a hint. I totally can see that because when I saw the season premiere, I could just see Celestia's face saying, All according to plan. While she eats a bag of chips. Oh, God, the most intense chip eating in history. <laughs> yes. First, I'll have a chip. And then, I'll make a friendship. I. <laughs> 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 but still, that's what I think. That's what I see. That's just Celestia in a nutshell. It gets harder and harder to defend Celestia, I swear to God. Well, that's just sort of the way it goes. The further in you go, the harder it is to portray her as... If a character is removed too far, you start to question if they're really involved. Celestia has taught from afar for a while, but now we're kind of wondering, is the next evolution then for her to become more hooves-on? And I don't know. Arguably, a teacher should be hands-on at first and then let the student make their own mistakes. Let them grow. But we're going the opposite way. Yeah, that's that's the problem with Celestia here. But we're talking about Celestia again. Oh God, um, let's focus on Starlight. Come on. Well, Starlight once again showing her manipulative skills gets Spike narrating about his adventures and pulls up a inexplicable bag of popcorn, which makes me think she learned popcorn magic somewhere. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and basically, that's the one unique trait I see of her. Starlight is a commander personality type. She wants to be in charge. And I think that's something she needs to struggle with. Let's see here. There's a, I'm looking up 16personalitytypes.com, which is a... Oh, great, yeah, like the, uh, you know, the human metrics uh, personality types, like, you know, how you and I are INCJs. I'm not sure what Norman is, though. I need to take the Norman, test. Norman, are you introverted or extroverted? I don't know. I'm somewhere in between... I'm shy, yet I am outgoing, but I'm shy. 
Okay. When you recover, when you're at your most relaxed state, are you with friends or are you in your room alone? When you say recover or relax, what do you mean by that? So it has to be in context here. Recharging. Well, like after a long day. Alone. I'll be home alone in front of the computer, just hanging out and stuff. I would say that's introverted. Yes. But then again, I'm not qualified to make psychological... We'll have, we'll have to get you a test later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like when you're saying after a long day, yeah, I want to go home and relax. I've been out all day long with my friends. <laughs> Basically, Starlight Glimmer's personality, as I can estimate, is extroverted, knowing, thinking, and judging. That is the commander. That is someone who wants to be in charge right away. And the greatest test they face is to listen to others and to not, and they can often come across as ruthless in pursuing their goals. Now, she was plenty Mm. ruthless and she recognized that, but that does, but that can be a strength. She can organize ponies like no one's business and make things happen. And that's what we saw. But now she needs to find a way to do that without being a tyrant. What well, personality is that again? E-N-T-J. Huh. I had a feeling. That's my mom's personality yeah. type. Huh. That explains a lot. We say judging and people think, oh, you're so judgmental. It's a negative. No. Sometimes judging means you're able to make snap decisions or you can take measure of a situation very quickly. It's not a negative in and of itself. It's how you treat people. You say, this person would not do well in this group. Is a far cry different judgment than saying, this person is worthless because they won't fit with this group. And looking here with how Starlight's personality is, we do see that, okay, she still has that lingering idea of she wants to be in charge And like I mentioned before, the spike scene where she doesn't really want to go to Sunburst's house that fast or that soon. So I'll distract Spike by manipulating him into telling a story. Yay! Which is a very important aspect. It's why I was less thrilled that she was suddenly now now just timid and afraid of everything. I'd like to see her still struggle with that sort of have to rein herself in. To not try and take command of everything. I think the reason why she was timid and afraid is because of the situation she was put into. And that situation was to meet her old friend, Sunburst. She doesn't want to go to Sunburst. Hey, Sunburst, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I manipulated time and I went time traveling. I did this and I did that. I was an evil character. Yay! And that's what she was trying to avoid. And that's why she was nervous and scared. And yet, all Sunburst could focus on, did you really travel through time? (laughs) I told you. (laughs) And Spike says, I told you he would be interested. So you tried to kill someone? That's fascinating. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but still, but still, that's what she was trying to avoid. And, well, I think she learned her lesson there. Um, You... What's done is done. It's what you do after that. It's what you learn. And now, so we pretty much covered where she's been. I mean, she did take some command when she pointed out that Sunburst would have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So there's her stepping in at the 11th hour. Again, kind of mimicking Sunset from Rainbow Rocks, you know, giving giving everyone the talking to. I can't help but make those comparisons. I need to ask, does Sunset have the same personality type as Starlight here? It's hard to say be- because we knew so little about her in in the first Equestria Girls. Well, except she's a bully. Well, lots of personality types can become the bully. Sunset always seemed to want more. She demanded more of herself, and that turned to the negative of entitlement. But arguably, she's also unforgiving towards herself. I'd have to mull that over. I'd have to see what makes the most sense for personality types. All right. I mean, it was just one. I was just wondering because if they're if these two are very similar, are they the same? Hmm. Oh well. So anyway, uh, we've. But even people with the same personality type are not the same. Everyone has a different expression. It's it's a general sort of guideline. So here's the question. What is Starlight going forward? What's her next step? 
Hmm. Please, please not another alicorn. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I hope not as well. Yeah. Maybe she could somewhat contribute in that factor, like maybe Twilight's personal assistant later on down the line when she, when Celestia passes on. I don't know. Probably. Um. I doubt Celestia will pass on considering the show. Yeah, I mean. But I don't know. Maybe she'll end up being um Twilight's witness and going around spreading the gospel of friendship. <laughs> oh well. And she puts silver spray at her teeth and screams, witness me! <laughs> uh, well, that's, um, that's it for the three timeline of, um, Starlight. Her past, present, and unfortunate future. And what could we expect for her now? Because we're still in the first three episodes of season three. And what we know of her is, well, we just seen her in episode one and two, which is on the Crystal Empire, the Crystalling. So we got no idea what they have planned for her. All we can do is just speculate. And well, judging from the first two episodes, I say that we might be getting the same formula where she learns how to deal with friendship problems and she solves it in a way. I don't know. That's what I'm seeing here. Basically, like, going into the role in shoes of... uh Twilight Sparkle the Unicorn. Probably, yes. I'm concerned that would mean that Twilight has stopped learning lessons. And really, when you're a teacher, you learn from your students as well as they learn from you. The very end of that episode, I think Spike and Twilight come to an agreement where we're both learning at the same time here. I don't know. Spike was more like, you're, you're doing exactly what Celestia did. Letting your student learn... By being absent. <laughs> oh, so oh I, God! I, I'm not totally sold on on his uh, his sales pitch. <laughs> oh no! Just just send me to be your overseer. <laughs> oh wow! Now, man, now. Right now, for future episodes, I'd like to see Starlight working with more of the main cast than just Twilight. If she's divorced from the group, then they're letting her potential slip. I'm fine if she really does become a member of the main six, seven now. But she's got to be more than just Twilight Student then. Well, episode four has an interesting tagline. Um, it starts the CMC, and it's all about cutie marks, probably. She's over the whole cutie mark thing, man. She's <laughs> like, oh, Shaw, sure, that's so last season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. I'm looking for episodes involving Starlight, and I don't see much. Really, we're in a wait and see. It'll be interesting to comment on how she integrates. Mm -hmm. That's true, that's true. Well, uh, I think that's it for now, because with no new info, we don't have anything much to talk about. Well, but... later down the line, maybe we could find something to talk about. Who knows? We'll, we... we'll have to find out. We'll revisit this topic. Yes. As long as she doesn't learn those creepy, creepy friendship spells. Oh, God, no. I will harp on this until the end of the show and beyond. You do not, you do not magic banjack someone into being your friend. Didn't you have the same problem with the whole reforming spell? I did have the same problem with the reforming spell. It's just that at least there one could argue it's for an irredeemable party. This is just two friends who aren't getting along. <laughs> oh, no. Suddenly it's all Teletubbies and Barney. <laughs> I love you. You love me. Oh How about we get all brainwashed and crap? I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's quite like terrifying. That. It's a terrifying concept. It, we're not meant to see it that way, but I can't interpret it any other. You're forcing friendships. But anyway. Yes, but that, Starlight hasn't done that yet. So. Well, she did, but through brainwashing and... Stealing cutie marks. So, it's cool. Yeah. 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 Anyway, <laughs> let's end this. Yeah, that is all we have to say for now. But uh, coming up, we'll be talking about fu future episodes, future comics. In fact, Norman, mm -hmm. what's on the docket for our next podcast? I think next week we should really talk about episode three of season six. The way of the mod, was it? The gift of the yeah, mod the pie. the gift of the mod pie. The gift of mod we're looking to modify our podcast. Yes, indeed. 
<laughs> but anyway, so that's next week's episode review. And we'll see what we do for the next week's one. You'll just have to wait because we like to do things slowly. Very slowly. Not as slow as Silver Call, though. Oh, she was fired. That's fired. She says having take having spent the last several hours talking with him. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, what now? Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna tell everyone you don't like that my review isn't up. Blame Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So Sapphire's fault. That's right. Yes. Suddenly, it's easy to shift the blames. Uh, Blame Sapphire. Uh, Blame Sapphire. Blame Sapphire. Yeah, I need to get my pitchfork then. Alrighty then. Pitchforks already. Alrighty. But he's but, so fun to talk to. Okay. Well, we will all see you again for another episode chat, followed by some comic chats at some point. Mm-hmm. But for now, on the MBS show, I am Silver Quill. I am Roman Sanzo. And I am Sapphire Heartsong. And we will catch you later. Adios. See ya. Uh, she's, Sapphire? She's not here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought we were done. Bye bye! <laughs> Yeah, not until the song, man. And now we're That's done. That's what I was waiting for. Now we're That's done. That's what I was waiting for. I'm like saying you're waiting on Silver. It's like, okay, you can do the outro.